started. <laughs> so I'm just calling everyone on this chat, and it's, it goes, this is just a part of the poem. You can look it up. It's by Dan, Diane Ackerman. I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred, but offer myself humbly as a guardian of nature, as a healer of misery, as a messenger of wonder, as an architect of so the line that I love in this poem is as a messenger of wonder. And I always mm. think about this whenever I'm writing because that's what we're doing. <laughs> when we're writing about our research, we are carrying a message of wonder for people. <laughs> and, um, and the reason why I bring this up is just because, um, you know, a lot of these productivity tips that I introduce the goal is not to just be productive to be productive. There's always a broader goal in mind. And I see these broader goals on a large scale and a small scale. So there's a larger scale to our work, climate change, curing cancer, um, equality, poverty, um, social justice, human rights, these kinds of things. Um, I think we carry these in mind and I hope we remind ourselves of some of these broader goals you know that we are using in our work um, but there's also a smaller scale to it as well and that is um, to be messengers of wonder yes to share our work with other people and by sharing our work with other people um, we connect and we're not as isolated. We're not as alone when we do, when we are able to share our work, when we are able to share our research with other people. Um, but also even on a, on a smaller scale, on an individual scale, um, I know when I am engaged in my research, when I am writing, that is when I feel most alive in myself and in my life. And, and so I really want everyone to, you know, that's kind of my goal for this writing retreat is for people to really find that aliveness in themselves and to really engage with their work as a sacred practice of saying, um, you know, I'm a human being, I'm not a robot, and I'm engaging with my creative side as a way to feel alive. Um, and so I just kind of want to encourage that partially because today's topic is a little bit anxiety producing for some people. And just to remember, like, we're not trying to be productive just to be productive. We're, we have these other things to feel alive, to connect with other people, to engage with our creativity, to make the world a better place at the end of the day. Um, and so I just really encourage that because I think for many years when I was in graduate school, a lot of it was just, oh, I'm doing this just to get a job. And if that is your goal, you will burn out maybe when you're 40, maybe when you're 50, but you will burn out. Um, and so I just encourage everyone to remember some of these other goals that we have in mind for doing our work. So without further ado, I will start with one of my most, this can be, this, this can be really triggering for people um, just because not everyone thinks this way. So I do want to acknowledge that. And if this doesn't work for you, that is also totally fine. But again, this is the goal is not to be productive, just be productive. I want you guys to use some of these strategies to help you find your creative muse, to help you find your mission in life. And, and so this can be the, the tool that I'm going to introduce today is one way to do that. Um, it doesn't work for everyone, but maybe try it today and see, see how you like it and adjust it to how you how it works for you um so um again we offer a lot of different services so if this is something that helps you works with you um i do encourage you to just look at some of the other things that we do um leslie does the endurance phd seminar um, which is every single week through the summer through the school year so if this kind of um, support and community really works for you um, i do encourage you to sign up for endurance phd again if you have any questions about any of this stuff please do send me an email 
Um, or you can put a question in the chat um, and I can go over them um, this afternoon when we have time. Um, so one of the really key strategies that has worked for me um, in different iterations um, in the past is time tracking. So um, currently what I'm doing is I am using time tracking to just track my creativity time. In the past, I have used time tracking to only track um, writing time. Um, I've also used time tracking to only track um, when I'm working on TA stuff. So be flexible with it, um, but this can be an incredibly useful tool um, for um, keeping yourself accountable, but also rewarding yourself. Because sometimes at the end of the day, we feel like we didn't get anything done. But with time tracking, you can go back and you can see, okay, I did do, I did get some stuff done. I know I did because I tracked my time while I was doing it. Um, and it's basically a tool to collect data on yourself. We are all researchers. We enjoy collecting data. Um, so this is one way to do it for yourself and with yourself um, to really see when am I most productive during the day? Is it in the morning? Is it in the afternoon? Is it in the evening? Um, and what is my maximum time limit? Um, from research, oh, we know that four hours of difficult intellectual productive work is the max. Um, so not including reading, not including checking email, of course, but um, so we know that it's about four hours, but that varies. For some people, it's three hours. For some people, it's five hours. So if you track your time, you can get some, some good data, some good, you can see what are your patterns and what can you do to kind of use your own personality, your own way of being to maximize your ability, again, not to be productive per se, but to be creative and to really engage with this work in a positive way. And the key thing for this is you are running an experiment on yourself. So it's just an experiment. There's no judgment. It's not about slapping yourself on the hand because you only got three and a half hours instead of four hours one day. That's not what it's about. It's, I really encourage you to have a non-judgmental mindset, a simply an ob observer's mindset, just like any good researcher would be, right? You're not going to say, you're not going to approach your data with a judgmental mindset. That's, that's a terrible way to <laughs> approach your research. Of course, we're all subjective, right? Um, we can talk about that, but, <laughs> but in, you know, when you're writing an experiment, when you're, when you're collecting data, you really want to be as you know, just an observer. What's going on? What works for me? What doesn't work for me? And, and um, how can I use this information to help me live an easier life? So there's lots of different ways that you can track your time. So I've got some um, fun links in here that you can explore on your own because um, I'll send the I'll send the PowerPoint out again to the list like I did yesterday. Um, you can use to track your time. Basically, it's using a timer to keep track of when you're working or when you're writing. You can use Toggle. Um, that's the timer that I use. And I can give you guys a little um, demonstration after this. Actually, let me just do that right now. So I use Toggle. So like I said, I um, have used Toggle for many years. And when I was in grad school, I used it for um, when I was working on my dissertation and TA stuff. Um, currently, because I have a nine to five job, which is this glorious position, um, I don't need it to track my working hours, but I, um, because I know I just work nine to five. It's a wonderful thing. Um, but I, do, I am using it currently to track my creative time because I realize that creativity is a big part of my life. So, um, so basically, this is the, the, the format. And you can see 
I just kind of keep track of all my time um, that I'm working on different projects. So you can see like last week, um, this is what I was working on. And I have it broken up into creativity, academic writing, book project um, that I'm working on, things like that, my blog. Um, so for you guys, you would just say, um, let's say, um, um, environmental article, and then you can tag it as academic writing, and then you press play. And then it tracks your time as you're writing. So you're writing, 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 and then you're done, or you need to go to the bathroom or take a coffee break, then you pause it. And then when you're ready to start again, you come back from your bathroom break um, or whatever it is, and then you press play again, it'll keep tracking. Then when you're done, you pause it and it kind of keeps a log. And then you can also see um, by week how things were going Monday, Monday through Friday, how many, what you did, break down by project, and then kind of this graph of what you were working on. So I was working on creative writing, I'm working on my book, working on academic writing, and then working on my blog. So you can kind of see, last week I did that for eight hours. So um, that's just one example of a tool that you can use. Um, and I'll just, and then you can also delete things, of course. So um, that's just one thing you can do. There's also an app called um, Forest. And that's a more visual app where every time you um, track your time, you grow a forest. Um, but you can also use paper. Um, I have a link here to the Productivity Planner, which is a specific planner that some of you might want to try, some of you might want to really like. And then the Bullet Journal. The Bullet Journal is more like... Um, graph paper with dots on it. So it's more free flowing. You can do flow charts, you can draw, um, and it's very creative and um, innovative. So I have a link there as well for you to just explore. One of the most important things about tracking time, one of the things I like about it is it kind of forces you or encourages you, I guess I should say, um, to really have really specific tasks and really specific times that you're working on those tasks. Um, so I just encourage you um, every day to write down your three most important tasks and then establish specific tasks with time parameters. This can be different ways, like I was talking about yesterday, it can be different formations of that, but I have some examples here. I'm going to work on the outline for chapter three from nine to 10 a.m. Some people like to just not have a time parameter and just say, I'm going to write 500 words. Um, some people don't like to have a specific time of day, but they just say, I'm going to do this for 50 minutes. Um, so this is an example of one daily action plan, and I got this from the productivity planner. Um, and I made a spreadsheet um, that goes with this slide. I'll just send this out in the email. And if you're interested in kind of this more speci very specific way of tracking your time in 25 minute chunks, um, you can check out the link that I have on this slide. And then you can check out the spreadsheet that I'll send out. Um, but basically it's just a way to organize your tasks and organize your time. So once again, I am going to plug my publication bootcamp. Um, if you want more information, um, you can check out this link that I have on the, on the slide that I'll send out. It starts on June 4th from 12 to 1 p.m. So I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited for you guys to work on some of your publications this summer um, and be great to work with you. It's um, for 12 weeks. And so we would get to work together all summer and I'm really looking forward to it. So again, um, we've got a lot of resources. The links are in here so you can explore that on your own. 
Um, if you have any questions, um, please email them to me and we'll go over them when we meet again at 1130 today. So let's do breakout sessions again. Um,